My name is Hassan Murad. I'm a professor of medicine at the Mayo Clinic and I direct the Mayo Clinic Evidence-Based Practice Center. Today I will briefly uh, talk about a recent article published at the Mayo Clinic Proceedings titled Clinical Practice Guidelines, a Primer on Development and Implementation. The intended audience of this paper is guideline developers as well as uh, practicing clinicians. Physicians who, who are intending to practice evidence-based medicine often have difficulty in keeping up with the evidence. There are more than 2,000 citations indexed every day and more than 5,000 journals uh, indexed in Medline. Therefore, we have to depend on clinical practice guidelines. Guidelines are statements systematically developed by experts after reviewing the evidence, and they intend to uh, tell us about the best treatment choices and management approaches in specific situations. Uh, in the 1970s, guidelines were developed uh, based on consensus of experts, with some references that were often uh, collected unsystematically. However, in the early 90s, uh, the ev evidence-based medicine has become uh, a framework for decision-making, and the term was coined in 1991 by Gordon Guyatt. Subsequently, in the early 2000s, uh, the GRADE Working Group, which is an international uh, group of clinical epidemiologists and methodologists, developed the GRADE system. The GRADE system is a system that uh, has two components. Uh, the first component help us grade the quality of evidence, which is the certainty in the evidence. And the second component is about making a recommendation and transforming evidence into a recommendation. The first component is rating the certainty in the evidence. And uh, GRADE was unique in providing uh, an explicit and specific framework with domains that help us make this determination. So some of these domains are the methodological limitations of the studies, uh, then there's the domain of consistency, so are the studies consistent? Uh, the other domain is uh, directness, so is the evidence direct, meaning do the patients and interventions in the literature, um, s uh, do they differ from the ones that are intended to be targeted by the guideline? And um, also a grade looks at precision, which is um, would our decisions differ across the boundaries of the confidence interval? So if the upper boundary were to be the truth versus the lower boundary, if our decision differs, then the evidence is imprecise. So following this framework, we can reach a final determination of the quality of evidence. And then for transforming evidence into a recommendation, there is also explicit factors that help us in making this transition. These factors include patients' values and preferences, uh, availability of resources and cost, and the balance between benefit and harms, as well as other factors such as acceptability of the intervention by patients and physicians, uh, equity, and also uh, feasibility of the intervention to be implemented. Uh, so the GRADE uh, system has been used by over 100 organizations and has become, to, to, to some extent, the gold standard in guideline developments. Subsequently, the Institute of Medicine, which is now called the uh, Academy of Medicine, the National Academy of Medicine, uh, developed a criteria for trustworthy guidelines that reaffirmed the GRADE framework and um, actually made rigorous guideline development more compelling. And this criteria was widely disseminated. Uh, so the final uh, point I would like to make is people often uh, wonder, do guidelines actually improve patient outcomes? And the answer is yes. So there are many studies that showed that patients who were treated following guideline recommendations have lower morbidity, mortality, and sometimes cost compared to patients who were not. Uh, and this was shown in a variety of conditions. It was shown in heart failure, atrial fibrillation, pneumonia, breast cancer, and other conditions. So guidelines do help improve patients' outcomes, 
but adherence to guidelines is actually quite variable. And uh, this tells us that guidelines require active uh, dissemination uh, strategies and innovative ways to have them implemented and um, uh, employed by all physicians and patients. Uh, I hope that uh, this framework um, will help you uh, implement guidelines and use them in your practice and hopefully that will have uh, an impact on patient's care. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.